everybody and welcome to Beyond the Sim Rig. You're joined by um, me, Tsunoto 208, and I will be joined by a very special guest from the other side of the world, in fact, the, this week uh, of, the, of, of this podcast, even the separate mini-series that we have going on. If you're wondering what it is, this is how we're going to do driver interviews from now on. There will be a separate series discussing all the stuff that's been going on in the lives of the drivers and the lives of the admins even in fact we have an admin on this week for the first ever episode of this so uh, i hope you guys enjoy the conversation that we had it's going from the beginning of gavra to how it changed into something of a, a monster with a titan to, to to wrangle well the uh, the admin team and uh, yeah i hope you enjoy listening to our conversation as much as uh, myself and Razy enjoyed recording it hello everyone and welcome to the podcast interview section. Now, this week we have a very interesting guest, one all the way from the other side of the world, in fact, one of three people to hold the senior admin role on the Gamba Racing Discord server. It is the one and only AA Razy. And hi, Razy, how are you doing, mate? All right, as well. So, what, what time is it actually for you over there, really quickly? It's uh, just ticked over to 6 30 a.m. Jesus Christ, <laughs> that's commitment right there. Uh, so, uh, that's okay. lovely, to, <laughs> lovely to have you on, mate. So, um, definitely one of our more exotic guests in, in terms of location. Uh, but for those of you, uh, our listeners who don't know who you are, could you tell us maybe a little bit more about yourself? So, where you're from, if you can't work it out from the time zone, and uh, what series you raced in? <laughs> um, yeah, well, uh, I'm in New Zealand. Uh, and uh, as we mentioned before, it's 6.30 a.m. here, and uh, I'm actually quite used to getting up at this time for racing because all you guys, or most of you, are all based in Europe, right? So uh, the racing the Gavra Racing Series all takes place in the evening over there, so uh, I'm quite used to getting up early for uh, to um, participate in, in any Gavra Racing events. Um, but anyway, yeah, I'm based in New Zealand. Um, that's where I'm from. Uh, my first name is Aaron, by the way. So uh, my um, my handle on Discord, at least anyway, is AA Razy. Um, but first name Aaron, so please use that if you can. Right, yes. um, yeah, so uh, it's about as far as I can get from you fellas. <laughs> yeah, and say so, yeah, other side of the world. The toilets flush the other way in New Zealand, apparently, so they do over here. So, uh, yeah, yeah. That, that's right. <laughs> uh, so I, I haven't, this... I, ha- I haven't, I haven't done an exhaustive, uh, any exhaustive research or surveys on this, but uh, as I understand it, that's right. In the southern hemisphere, the the uh, the what I think it's called the Coriolis effect. The water circles the other way around the drain. Yeah, there's a, a, a bit of a geography knowledge there for all of our listeners. There you go. Uh, so this season, I think you competed across the I Racing Championship, which is unfortunately cut short, finishing uh, in ninth in the overall standings. Were you happy with those performances in that league, or were you hoping for a little bit more? Um, well, it was cut short, and I did miss a race in that uh, being cut short. So I guess the um, being ninth wasn't it really a uh it's not really relevant uh but in terms of the series itself uh we had high hopes for it actually there's been a few uh gather racing members join i racing in the past year and uh there, there was yeah as i said we we hoped for more but participation seemed to be down which is why we canned it uh which was unfortunate but the way I race, once you get into I racing, it operates very different from uh, the regular leagues we run in Gavra Racing, for example, or other uh, console-based leagues like that. Uh, that it's very free and open. Races run all the time, and once you start doing that, you get very used to running things your own, your own way. So reverting back to that very strict regimented uh, participation that that consoles are, are pretty much restricted to. Um, it becomes a little bit more difficult. On top of that, the uh, what we we tried to make a series that was very that allowed as many people to join or perhaps dabble in i racing if they chose to. Uh, so we tried to make it as cheap as possible using free tracks uh, to sort of lower the barrier to entry. Um, but 
as it went on, we kind of found that uh, it would have been much better to synchronize with some of the uh, the we ran GTE class, right? It would have been better for us to synchronize with uh, the GTE championships in um, in iRacing in terms of tracks, because if you're you know you're running a track one week one week runs at Imola, for example, it would have been good to have the uh, Gavra Racing event at Imola in the same week. So you know you're on the same page in terms of practice and and uh, mindset and all that for the for the parallel what's running parallel in, in i racing and we didn't do that which uh, in hindsight is a wonderful thing of course maybe we should have um and uh so you know participation kind of fell away a little bit we're a little bit disappointed but we learned from that so uh if we pick it up again i, I think we'll run things a bit differently um but in terms of results i was quite happy with the way things went and the way it was run and uh the you know the drivers are very good and and uh it was great it was great to be participating it was actually really good to be participating participating in i racing with uh the guys that i knew well and uh, done a lot of laps together with uh in in gavra it was quite a, a special thing uh, so it was good from that point of view all right nice and i think um recently just staying with the uh the i racing kind of vibe at the moment uh, the Delara IRO one or zero one, uh, it was released earlier this week or last week. Bit of a controversial, one. obviously a car that doesn't actually exist in real life, which maybe isn't in accordance with what I racing, what the values of I racing traditionally have been to you know, create the most realistic simulation ever. Well, what what are your views on it? Do you think that maybe if we did a league in that, it would get more people in? I mean, have, have you driven it? Even I, I heard it's, here it's quite a fun car to drive. Obviously the uh, the V ten in the virtual world. Not to worry about CO two emissions and stuff. Yeah, I, I don't know. The uh, I'm not an open wheel uh, fan, really. I prefer, you know, the uh, like the GT car style cars or uh, tin tops. Um, so, uh, but in terms of being a, a virtual or a car that doesn't exist in the real world, I, as I understand, it was actually designed. Uh, or it went through the same or a very similar kind of design process as a real world car. It was designed by uh, Dallara in conjunction with iRacing, and it followed a very um, a very similar design process as a real car. So uh, the fact that it was virtual, it finished up being virtual, is kind of uh, it's not like you know some of these racing games. It's a completely imaginary car made up. Um, it, based on real world physics, of course, but it's something that's completely imaginary. Uh, whereas I think this one is a bit more realistic. But uh, you know, there are some hardcore realism people in i racing. You know, that's what it's all about. It's supposed to be the best simulator. Uh, and uh, maybe having a, a like a a car that doesn't actually exist in the real world runs a bit against the the grain with that. I, I'm a little bit uh you know i don't really mind one way or the other um but i don't think it's a track the platform would want to go too far down in terms of uh you know cars that don't exist it's better to keep it in the real world there's a bit more of a connection for people you know you like to you like to drive the formula one car that the drivers are driving this season or the the, the gtes that the endurance guys are, are running you know you like to that it's a simulation after all so uh, i think it's better to keep it in the real world all right cool and um just, if we were to go back to i racing do you think we could do it maybe a 24 hour event, something like we did with, well, about six years ago now on Project Cars 2 over the 24 hours of the mod. Do you think maybe that could be a possibility if there's enough people? In the discussions we had after the, uh, after the failure of the series, it wasn't really a failure, it was just, well, yeah, it was a failure. But <laughs> uh, we thought that. Uh, that was one of the options that might be better is have a one-off events like that is you know a, an endurance series like the like the um le mans 24 hour or or uh, replicating other series 
the the only uh, the sort of the downside to that is that these things are done in iRacing anyway. So you know it's run much better with uh, much more participation and 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 all that in iRacing anyway. So uh, what's the point in running a dedicated Gavra series that would have minimal or at least not minimal but uh, you know very much reduced participation when it you could do it uh in, in a much more relevant context with races from all around the world i guess the one appeal would be as i mentioned briefly before is, is running one of these events with the guys that you know you know your good friends from gavara racing doing it all together that would be the uh, a major appeal i think um, but yes, we have thought about either running a series or running uh, you know, these one-off endurance events. In reference to the the 24-hour one we did, it might have been about three years ago, two or three, year, three years ago maybe, on Project Cars 2. Um, that was a crazy concept actually, doing a uh, doing a 24-hour a real 24-hour race on on the console changing drivers and and it was quite a logistical i wasn't involved in the organizing of it but um the guy who was uh he did a fantastic job in putting it all together and and uh, making sure it ran smoothly it was amazing an amazing achievement i think and actually for project cars 2 in the next season or or next year i know they're thinking about running uh, perhaps a 24-hour event in a slightly different way, um, doing it in uh, like sections. You run two or three hours, and then you complete the, you know, the you come back next week and do another two or three hours. I'm not sure how they're going to jigsaw all that together, but uh, the talk I've seen it, it looks like uh, there's some thought being gone into actually being able to do this, and that would be a pretty good simulation of. Uh, uh, a 24-hour event or a longer endurance event if they can pull it off it's uh, quite a good concept oh yeah certainly Matt to reinstall project cars too then in that case on my playstation uh so moving on from that then how do you actually first get involved in gara because i think you've been here for uh, quite a while now yeah uh i don't think there's anybody left here that's been long here longer than i uh you know that's sort of currently uh, or active in the in the group, apart from Gavra himself, there's one or two or three others that are um, that have here, been here for very long as well. Um, but yeah, that was, was back in 2016. Gavra contacted me. I don't know why or how. I just re remember feeling uh, sort of uh, honoured or uh, excited that someone had asked me to participate in a league. Um, and the first race I did was uh, an Aston Martin event at Monza, and I think it was May, April or May 2016. And uh, I ran out of gas. I never finished the. I never finished the race. Um, <laughs> I used to run on, on you know, just. I used to run just solely on console doing the single player, right? And mm -hmm. uh, of course, when you do that, you can turn the damage off, and you don't use any gas and all that kind of stuff. So that was the kind of the mindset I, mindset I was in. So I didn't sort of think about pit stops or anything like that. So I just uh, started running and then ran out of ran out of gas. I didn't. It was nothing that it wasn't anything that came to my mind. Oh, I got to fill up with gas. No, but anyway, it was a good experience, and so I stuck with uh, with Gavra. And uh, there was the next series after that was a uh, uh, oh, what was the what was the the open wheel, the base level open wheel in Project Cars One. Formula. I can't remember. B or Formula A. Maybe? No, no, it, w no. it was uh, the it was not not the top tier one, like the base no. level one. I can't remember. But anyway, it was uh, we had a, a series in that. I participated in that, and and I got quite interested in in uh, sort of organising things, and I badgered gather enough to he finally let me organize a series i think it was lmp3 in project cars one which was the uh the radical the sr3 rs was classified as a, a lmp3 back in p2 
PCARS one. So I organized that and um, and uh, that turned out pretty good. So Gavin must have thought I did a reasonable job. So I just kind of got involved in an admin level from there and and uh, became you know, what still is a big part of my, my life and a big part of my concern uh, is Gavra Racing. You know, it's very special. It's a very special place and it's grown from uh, basically one grid of cars. I know Gavra was on, P, uh, on uh, uh, Gran Turismo 6 briefly before going to Project Cars 1. I wasn't involved at that stage, um, but uh, it's grown basically from that single grid plus a few extras of, of that uh, Aston Martin race at Monza in 2016 to where it is now. There's uh, lots of members of, and and we've got Formula One and GT Sport and branching out into uh, other other genres like, um, you know, the, the uh, that rocket ball or whatever it is, the, and uh, other, other games. So it's become, uh, it's amazing to think back where it started and uh, where it's eventually progressed to at the moment. It's uh, quite, quite astounding. Yeah, so I think kind of answer the next question, but I'll ask anyway. Did you think that the uh, league would ever grow to the size that it is now? Obviously, just ticked over uh, 1,000 subscribers on the uh, YouTube and getting there on the Twitch. Uh, also, um, the drivers now, I think it's something like nearly 600 drivers in F1, which is just insane. You might make a couple of more new leagues for the next season, but more on that probably in a few, few months, few coming months. Uh, but yeah, did you think it would ever grow to the size that it is now? To be honest, I never really thought about growing it to any size. You know, it's not like we thought I would try and. Well, I, I'm not sure what was in Gavra's mind, but but from my personal point of view, I it was just like let's you know enjoy some racing and get some more leagues, you know, some more um, leagues going, and it just slowly grew and grew and grew, and and we had I think it was four or five project cars to leagues going at the height of Project Cars 2. Uh, and then when we switched, it really kicked off when we switched to Discord because the the, the PS chat is, uh, you know, it's it's not really conducive to uh, organizing things and, and running things in a, a, a sort of a structured way. Uh, it's not very good for that. So uh, when we moved to Discord, it allowed us to um, uh, sort of get a bit more structure around it and, and form groups and uh, a bit more effectively and and uh, and run things uh, much better. So uh, as I said, once I hit Discord, then it really started to uh, balloon and um, became a little bit of a monster actually uh, for us because you know, well, for, speaking for myself, you know, I was always in the mindset of it being a, a small community and that's maybe a, a bit of a failing still uh for the way i see it at, at you know from my personal point of view is it a, a small community for uh like-minded guys that want to go around and have uh, you know drive together have some fun uh and uh you know just a, a bit of um a bit of a community around that and when you've got what was it 600 drivers now and, and is that an f1 alone i'm not sure you know it's not really you can't really have a community with that many people it's there's just too many um i think for a community 150 to 200 people at most is probably uh where it's at but um so it becomes a very different kind of a you know i'm not saying there's anything wrong, anything wrong with that but it becomes a different kind of a an organization rather than an intimate, um, uh, sort of very personal friendly, it becomes a bit more, um, uh, I don't know, impersonal at that level. It has to be because you, you can't do it any other way. Um, so, so that's a little bit disappointing from my personal point of view. And we've lost a lot of the, the members that we originally had. Of course, console, you know, games move on. Project Cars 2 is certainly on the way out. Um, 
and so you know things change and, and move on and that and that's fine but um uh in terms of you know where where were we going i don't think i ever envisaged this kind of uh this kind of thing uh, yeah so uh, just pulling away from the uh galleries and stuff if uh only for a, a brief moment so we understand that your daughter was inducted into the xbox hall of fame is that correct yes yes uh, she was. could you uh talk to us Talk to us a little bit um, about how that actually came to be, because that kind of came out of nowhere in the uh, in the old chat in the Discord server. Yeah, well, um, she's a few of the other me older members might know because um, I've mentioned her briefly at different times over the past few years. Um, but she's a, a variety streamer, and she's sort of console or platform independent. She does PC and Xbox and and PlayStation um and i don't know why she is i don't think think there's a specific reason like these things are more promotional and um exposure oriented rather than based around any particular achievement um so uh, xbox were looking to push their new um console and uh she's probably the biggest one of the biggest streamers in new zealand uh certainly female anyway and uh you know that's quite a strategic or uh, it makes promotional sense for them to do something like that at that time so um that's not to minimize her ability or, or achievements in, in streaming which are, are quite uh you know it's quite good and, and she's done very very well certainly being from new zealand um and uh so yeah in, no specific achievement just uh one of those things that come along you know because she's uh got a, a bit of a profile and and uh, done some good work with xbox in the past you know in terms of promotions and and all that kind of stuff so uh but yeah she started uh, if i might talk a bit more about her i'm quite proud of her obviously mm -hmm. um she started about five years ago she, she just was just she got into streaming her um content uh, but she'd always been into uh computers and and video games i used to be a i've always been a bit of a gamer back in doom came out i think it was 92 uh 91 92 somewhere around there the original doom i used to play that quite a lot and uh she used to sit on my knee and watch me um watch me playing that and uh, so i like to i like to claim credit for her interest in in this area but uh anyway so about five years ago she started playing um or rather say she started streaming the things that she was doing she was quite heavily into destiny um at that time i think but anyway she she was streaming it and uh she, it just sort of grew from there she's she's very open and and um and uh, her personality really comes through online and and uh that's she you know she's quite attractive that way um but yeah it just grew from there and um and one thing led to another and she, she's been flown all around the world you know to the states and korea and aussie and thailand you know doing promotional things for different uh companies and platforms and uh yeah so i'm quite proud of her no, Sorry, I think and, I lost uh, the I lost the, I lost the thread of the original question there. I think I was waffling <laughs> on too much. Oh, that's actually perfectly fine. It answers the question perfectly. Actually, does she actually watch any of the races in the league? Because uh, if so, we should definitely get her in for a, a quick five lap sprint, maybe <laughs> on the F1 <laughs> game or something. Um, no, she do she doesn't. She's not really interested in in uh, driving. She's interested in in the fact that I do it, and I'm uh, sort of an online uh you know participate in, in online gaming she's interested in that but in actually doing it herself she's she's she has no real interest in it or uh uh watching it i think unless you're really into it watching it's not that, that interesting it's like anything i guess you know if if you're not really into it then watching it becomes a bit pointless um so uh yeah i i don't know what racing games she has got if she has any she she gets given the odd game now and then I, she gave me gran turismo uh gt sport when it came out someone gave uh, 
Sony or someone gave her that, so uh, she gave it to me, but I never, never used it. It's always been PCAS two for me on the console, and and once I got into iRacing with the uh, PC, I sold all my console gear off and and uh, got rid of it. I'm not going back. So. I think that uh, kind of wraps up the uh, the final questions. Oh, oh a quick, uh, quick one actually. Uh, those of you who know Razi will obviously know that he has the uh, New Zealand and South Korean flags in there. So, uh, can we talk a little bit about, uh, talk a little bit about the uh, South Korean flag? I think you explained the uh, New Zealand one quite well in the opening sentence. But uh, yeah, can you talk to, talk to us a little bit about the uh, the South Korea? Yeah, the uh, well, as you said, the New Zealand one kind of speaks for itself. But uh, I lived for. 11 years in South Korea. I went over there in 2003 uh, just for a year. I'd ha- I had a mate that went over there, a friend of mine went over there and he was an English teacher for a year and he came back to New Zealand. He said I was quite good. Um, he enjoyed his experience. He made a little bit of money and and uh, so I thought, oh, well, I'll give it a go. I've always, I'd always kind of wanted to try teaching, but when in your own country, you can't, it's not something you can just dabble in. You know, you have to, well, I'm going to make my career in teaching. That's the kind of attitude you have to take. So um, that's not what I was interested in. And I had a, another career at the time in software development. But um, I'd always was kind of interested in teaching. So away I went ostensibly for a year. I go away for a year experience doing that and then come back. But uh, I finished up staying there for 11 years. I enjoyed it that much. And uh, so a large part of my life uh, has been spent over there. And uh, it's uh, it's a country that's very, well, it's my second home. It's very dear to my heart. Um, I'm a full resident over there now. Um, so and my wife, I came home with a wife. So my wife is Korean. Oh, nice. And, uh... so, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for coming on there. I think that's the end of the questions there now. But yeah, always a joy to have you on. Uh, talk a little bit about the uh, the personal stuff alongside uh, the Gather Racing as well. Always a pleasure to have uh, new guests on all the time. Uh, so yeah, pleasure, mate. And hopefully we'll have you on again uh, in the near future. Yep. Well, it's, uh, I'm happy to, to be on. And, and uh, just the the uh, the podcast has been a, a really good addition to Gather Racing, I think. So uh kudos to you guys for coming up with the idea and, and and putting it together and and just being here in your in your discord seeing the way you run things it's it's very well organized and very professional so uh that's that's really really good and as i said it's a real uh, addition real great addition to the to the uh to the organization and uh, as always i like to say thank you very much to gavra um for being the 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 grandfather of everything we have here he's he's a very very fine gentleman and uh and a very patient and and giving person and uh uh, it's all it all started from him and uh, i'll always be uh, grateful to him for introducing something so um enjoyable and and and, uh, happy in my life so uh yeah thanks thanks guys and uh, it's been a real pleasure and and keep it up you got you know you're doing a really really good job thanks always means that means a lot uh thank you very much aaron and yeah. uh yeah we'll catch you around in the discord server and stuff mate, and hopefully we'll see you uh, on the grid soon uh, in a different league as well a differently different um series as well maybe f2 maybe maybe not yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah we will see you around mate it's again pleasure absolute pleasure to have you okay thanks guys Right, see you later, mate. See ya. So that was uh, Aaron Razy, everybody, and uh, a big thank you to him for coming on the podcast, agreeing to come on uh, to the podcast. If you'd like to be uh, involved in the same way that he was, drop me, Natty or Tiger or Bell, uh, on Discord, PlayStation, Instagram, whatever. It's all in the description down below, and we'll get back to you and have you on, hopefully, very shortly. So there you have it then, my a very in-depth interview and discussion with Aaron. It's great to have him on, lovely guy, and uh, hopefully we'll have him on again uh, in the near future as well. And just to reiterate myself, if you want to be on the podcast or like this mini series, sorry, again, then um, just like I said, message me, Tiger or Natty, all of the stuff's in the description down below, and uh, 
yeah we'll be happy to have you on and have an even more in-depth interview so uh, thank you for listening guys and uh, we'll see you in the next one watch out for the academy season review coming up next week see you guys Thank you.